Welcome to Ford Mod Motor Training Part 23. This video we're going to be taking a look at our torque table tuning in our Ford PCMs. Our torque tables are going to be something that we have to edit and change in the calibration scale if we're making more power and torque than stock. If we don't update these properly, we're going to be generating high torque errors, which can lead to drive-by wire throttle shutdowns and or improper drive-by wire control. It's gonna be imperative that we get our torque modeling right. I'm gonna go show you how to deal with your torque modeling using a Excel spreadsheet calculator developed for a training course that we can essentially go in and rescale our tables if we have a force induction application, say we're a three valve or supercharged or turbocharged, we definitely are gonna have much higher torque values within our torque tables. So the calculator is gonna allow you to rescale those tables very quickly. And then using our histogram and our VCM scanner, we can take log data and learn how to go and update our inverse table, which will then recalculate our torque tables. We're gonna find there's a whole process of this. We're gonna cover all of it in this video. Without further wait, let's jump in so we can check this out. Okay, so let's get started. We're gonna be taking a look at programming our torque tables in our Ford PCMs. Our torque tables are gonna be a necessity to get dialed in, or we're gonna find we have all kinds of drive-by wire throttle control problems. We might go and actually have throttle shutdown. We might get throttle closure at wide open throttle. All kinds of things that we might not wanna have when we're driving our car. So let's jump in and take a look at a calibration file. We're gonna be discussing the few areas and tables we're gonna be looking at and calibrating in this video. It's very, very focused on what we're gonna be talking about. Um, we need to make sure that this is, again, going to be accurately represented so that the PCM is gonna know what torque to expect and when we're actually figuring out the delivered torque or what we're measuring, what the engine's actually producing, the torque model and what it's going and seeing are gonna be in line with each other and it's gonna be happy and everything else is gonna fall in line within our programming. So first thing I wanna do is jump in here and open up that file. So let's go to File Open. Let's go and open up a stock equivalent file here. So this is a 2005 Mustang stock file. Let's click Open. We're gonna go into Engine tab here and then we're gonna go from General. We're gonna move across into Torque Model and then also into Torque Management. Now in Torque Model, we have two tables of interest that we're gonna be learning how to deal with in this video here. That's the Engine Torque and the Inverse Table. These have to be accurately represented for the engine that we're tuning, or we're gonna find as the PCM is trying to figure out what the deliver or scheduled torque is going to be at the engine, what the engine's actually producing in torque. If our torque model's off, it knows that there's some kind of a high margin of error, and if it doesn't like that, it can shut our throttle body down because there's gonna to be too much wheel torque error generated. So we need to make sure that we calibrate this, and we're gonna be looking at that a couple different aspects in this video. We have some other things within the torque modeling that are going to be trying to uh, model any kind of losses that we have. Now the engine torque table here, that's going to be what the uh, ideal or theoretical amount of torque the engine should make before we have any kind of frictional losses, any kind of drag on the engine. We'll find here there's an inertial torque. That's gonna to be what we have uh, modeled from Ford already. There's gonna be a lambda efficiency of fuel effect. That's gonna be a multiplier versus the lambda amount that we're operating at that is going to be affecting what the torque production is out of this particular table. We have a loss here, that's our frictional torque. That's any kind of internal frictional torque that's gonna be a loss from the engine. Um, Ford has modeled that, we don't need to change it. So those particular losses or gains, whether it's the lambda efficiency here, inertial torque, or the frictional loss, that again will affect an offset against the engine torque table. So the engine torque is our ideal torque that we'd like to be at before we have any losses. So then the losses subtract from that and we hit our net torque or the scheduled torque to the engine. Now we also have here under the monitoring tab, we have a few things that we can turn on or off. There's an IPC switch. Uh, there's a switch and enable uh, options here. We're gonna leave those on. This is gonna be pertaining to our wheel torque error. And it's gonna be looking at what kind of difference between the scheduled torque or what the torque that's calculated to the engine's producing versus what we're commanding from our PCM. If there's too large of a difference, whether we're making too much or too little torque, it can start to generate our wheel torque error and start to, to, to kick that up. If it has too high of a wheel torque error as we're driving around, it'll fault out the PCM. It'll go and actually try to shut down the throttle body. It'll go into a limp mode and we'll throw a little wrench light on the dash. We don't wanna do that. We wanna make sure we're satisfying the PCM and the torque modeling is right. So. We need to make sure this is all dialed in as we'd expect. So that is going to be something that we need to raise up here. So anytime you're doing any kind of torque tuning or throttle body based tuning, we wanna raise this up to 100,000. It's usually gonna be sufficient. Um, if you have to go higher than that, then there's something really wrong with your throttle body data or your torque data. Now I do wanna mention that coming into this torque video here, the last video we looked at our throttle body based tuning. I'm gonna be assuming before I touch any of my 
actual torque tables, then my throttle body data is nailed down. So the predictive and effective area table that we discussed in the last video have been sorted out. I always make sure that I go in and actually deal with the predicted and the effective area tables first before I turn my attention, if I'm still getting wheel torque errors generated in my data logs, before I turn my attention into my actual torque model. Um, because a lot of times, a lot of the wheel torque generation isn't necessarily coming from the torque model, it's coming from the actual uh, throttle body model. So that's, that's something to, to note here, it's very important before we get too much further into the video. So uh, last video, again, we covered all that. You can go back in and watch that if you skipped ahead into this video. That video is very important, um, assuming you've changed your throttle body from stock. If you don't haven't changed your throttle body from stock, but you're gonna be making more power than stock, let's say you're going from naturally aspirated on a three valve, you're going su supercharged, you're going turbocharged, you need to go and raise up your torque tables because it will affect um, all of the calculations going on and it can generate a high wheel torque error and uh, put you in limp mode. Uh, there is another table here. If we go into torque management, specifically into our driver demand. Thanks for checking out our teaser clip. If you want to see the rest of this video and more than 500 hours of current EFI training we have to offer, make sure you click right here. If you want to go and check out more teaser clips from this training course, click here. And you don't want to miss any of the videos we're going to be releasing on this channel. So make sure you subscribe and click here. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys later.